Hey there, welcome to another video of Alfstein. So in this video, we'll be making a circuit very similar to the one that we did in the last video. Also, P.S. if you didn't watch the last video, I recommend you watch that one. So the parts that you'll need for this experiment is actually very simple. It's just all you need is the previous experiment and this motor here. So now that we have all the components, I'll show you how to make it. So first, we disconnect the wires here and here. All you have to do is just pull them and they come out. And then we put the lamp socket here beside. Now we take the motor and then we connect the wires. If you forgot how to do it, just pull this back and then insert this in and then push it a little more. So we connect this wire here and the other wire here. And now it's done. To test, all we need to do is flip this switch and the motor and this fan should spin. And it works, see? The fan spins and it also makes a slight whirring noise. So, now that we know what this is, let's look inside of it. But first, I need to get something. This, this is what I was trying to get. This might seem a bit weird, but in reality, it's the exact same, whoops, it's the exact same thing as this motor. Let me show. So all you have to do is connect this instead of the motor. And now we flip the switch. As you can see, it works exactly the same as this small motor. That the fact that this is actually not encased in something like this. So now that we've seen this circuit, seen what it can do, now let's look into the big ideas. So firstly, if you don't know how battery wires or switches work, Look to the first video in this playlist. It should be somewhere up here, or I don't know, because I can't see it. But anyways, this is what the inside of a motor looks like. Well, actually, a better picture would be this picture here. So, these black boxes on the top and bottom are magnets. And there's a rod in the middle. Also, it's actually made of two parts and with a membrane separated in the middle. A current goes here and up here so that when this, when this thing turns, the one side of the rod will, be, will be, have one charge and the other will have a different charge. And then, when they, and then when it turns, basically they flip sides and then the charge is different. So these things here, rods of iron with wires wrapped around them. These wires are also connected to the um, to the shaft. And so there are three of them. And um, so first, let's talk about electromagnets. Electromagnets are formed when you have a coil of wire. And, and when the coil of wire has a current pass through it, it will create like a magnetic field around it which can like attract things. For example, if you take a wire, a wire coiled up, and then put it into like into a pot of where there's a lot of iron flakes, you can actually pick up some of those flakes. Anyways, now this uh this like suppose that this top one is north and this bottom one is south. Say that it's spinning in this direction so and then this part it gets uh it's north now so it repels this and meanwhile this one is now south 
so that it goes towards this one. So then, so then it repeats and repeats, and then it starts to spin. So this one gets, so this one gets north, this one gets south, and then this one gets south, and this one gets, and then wait, this one gets north, this one gets north, this one is south. This one is south now. So then this one is north, it gets, it gets pushed away here. This one is south, this one is north as well, gets pulled towards this, and then this one is not. And then this one, and then this one here, which I didn't draw, will become south, which means it's pulled here and place this. And this one becomes north and gets pushed here and then and then it just forms this cycle of moving around and around and around and around and around and i've drawn a very bad fan here to signal that this is actually supposed to turn anyways okay now for the question of the day so, what will happen if there were no magnets, or if there was one magnet? Could this motor still run, or would it just stop completely and malfunction? Also, another question. Because this is, on, this is only going one direction, what if it was going at both directions? So... It would go this direction and then switch and go the other direction. What would happen? How could you make a motor like that? Now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.